The Ten Commandments of God Part 3 When type met anti-type in the death of Christ, the ceremonial law was done away. The Lamb of God was a complete and perfect offering. Therefore, types and shadows, offerings, and sacrifices, had no virtue after Christ's death on the cross. On the other hand, the cross establishes God's law of the Ten Commandments. Christ came to live this law, I have kept my Father's commandments. His gospel has not abrogated the law, nor detracted one tittle from its claims. Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5 verse 18 Therefore, the moral law of God needs to be fulfilled in Christ's professed people as it was fulfilled in him. Only then, they can expect the new heaven and new earth to be established. The law still demands holiness in every part. It is the standard of character for humans. Furthermore, it is immutable and the transcript of God's character. It cannot be changed, nor altered to meet humanity in our fallen condition. On the other hand, all the resources of heaven were given to accomplish the great work of our redemption. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3 verse 16 The law condemns one's iniquities and crooked practices. Therefore, many cry out today, Away with the commandments of God, crucify that law. As it was at ancient time, Away with Christ, crucify him, crucify him. Take a look at the moral standard of righteousness. Take a look at the Ten Commandments, that grow out of the principles of love to God and love to people. As the mirror reveals the defects in your appearance. So the moral mirror of the law will make plain the imperfections of your character. And the true condition of your heart. Christ in his humanity wrought out a perfect character. This character he offers to impart to us, because, all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Isaiah 64 verse 6 the Son of God was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. Sin is defined to be the transgression of the law. 1 John 3 verses 5 and 4 Christ was obedient to every requirement of the law. I delight to do Thy will, O my God, yeah, Thy law is within my heart. Psalm 40 verse 8 Therefore, it is impossible to obey the commandments of God without Christ's grace. When we submit ourselves to Christ, then our hearts are united with his heart, our will is merged in his will, our minds become one with his mind, our thoughts are constrained to him. Thus we live his life. This is what it means to be clothed with the garment of his righteousness. O oh, that thou hadst here ken to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Isaiah 48 verse 18 Righteousness can be defined only by God's great moral standard, the Ten Commandments. They are an expression of the principle of love, covering the duty of people to God and others. Christ, who spoke the law, declared that all the law and the prophets hang upon the two chief commandments that illustrate those two great principles. If ye love me, keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15 Love to God will be shown by obedience to all his commandments. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. John 14 verse 21 Those who here acknowledge God as their ruler, by obeying the laws of his government, will be accounted worthy of a place in his family in heaven. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Revelation 22 verse 14